free agency frenzy! Yeah. What's going on, baby football fans? I'm your host, Usain the Brain, in your watching the couch. Let's talk about these free agents and their impact on fantasy football. Tight end Jimmy Graham signs a three-year $30 million with the Green Bay Packers. A lot of people have been saying, well, the Packers don't really use the tight end position much. I'm not too sure about this. I think you're overthinking it. This is what it comes down to. Jordy Nelson caught 13 touchdowns in 2014. He was injured uh, the following year. Then in 2016, he caught 14 touchdowns. Okay? All right, that's just a fact. Aaron Rodgers throws more yards and more passing touchdowns than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is an amazing quarterback, but he is no Aaron Rodgers, especially when we're concerned about stats and passing stats. Now, we know Aaron Rodgers is an amazing quarterback, probably the best quarterback in the league as far as fantasy is concerned, or at least passing stats, I believe he's the best quarterback. Now when you get rid of a guy like Jordy Nelson, that was his number one wide receiver, okay, and you sign a guy like Jimmy Graham, you're gonna try to use him. E even though, look, even if it doesn't work great, you're gonna forcefully try to use him. There's really no other choice here and as far as a tight end, you know, quote unquote tight end, the Packers really haven't had a tight end like Jimmy Graham in recent years. Jimmy Graham is known for creating mismatches, catching the football, getting a good amount of receiving yards, and catching touchdowns. It's just plain and simple as that. I think Jimmy Graham will finish as a top four tight end easily in 2018. I just hope that he gets underrated, a little bit undervalued in fantasy drafts. I'll be able to swoop him up close to the mid rounds. He'll probably still go in the early rounds, but early to mid rounds, I might take a flyer on Jimmy Graham. The Kansas City Chiefs sign wide receiver Sammy Watkins to a three year, $48 million deal. That's a lot of money for Sammy Watkins, but I'm actually not really interested in Watkins. Like, I don't really care. There's a lot of wide receivers out there when it comes to fantasy. Now, why I'm mentioning this and why I do care is because Patrick Mahomes, I really believe in this guy as a fantasy quarterback. I'll probably end up drafting it. I'm gonna be targeting Jimmy Graham and Patrick Mahomes. And even though I like these guys, I'm never gonna reach for them. There's plenty of quarterbacks. There's plenty of tight ends. I don't need to reach and draft them too early, but I think this significantly boosts the value of Patrick Mahomes. Risky quarterback in fantasy, but the upside is just through the roof. I think Mahomes will be a great QB. The Broncos signed Case Keenum to a two year, $36 million contract. Will this boost the value of Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders? My honest answer is, I don't know. I'm not afraid to admit when there's question marks. Like, for example, Terrell Pryor last year, that was a huge question mark to me. I honestly didn't have a good read whether he'd be good or bad. I just knew there was risk and there was potential. Now, obviously, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders gets a boost in value. I think that's just it's just common sense like there's only you can only go up from last year right with Trevor Simeon and whoever else was throwing the ball to these guys but how much does it go up look is these guys gonna be fantasy worthy like would you want them on your fantasy team if I had to say yes or no I'd say yes I do believe Sanders and Demarius Thomas will both be fantasy relevant again they'll both be decent will they be wide receiver ones Probably not. The Bears were one of the most active teams during this free agency frenzy. They made some insane moves, an insane amount of moves. They got Allen Robinson, they got Taylor Gabriel, they got uh, Trey Burden, a good pass catching tight end. And what, what does this mean? Well, I think Mitchell Trubisky has a tremendous upside and he can kind of be like Jared Goff, how Jared Goff was in his sophomore year. Now, Jared Goff finished a quarterback 12 last year. I think Mitchell Trubisky has that type of ceiling to be that well. I don't think Mitchell Trubisky is gonna be top 10, but as a QB two for fantasy, Trubisky could be worth a shot. Another team that made a lot of moves was the Raiders. Other than getting John Gruden as a coach, which was the most important move the Raiders made, I think signing cornerback Rasheen Melvin was the best signing they made. This cornerback is really good. He signed a one year, $6.5 million deal. It's gonna really help out their defense. They signed a lot of other defensive players as well. 
And they also signed Doug Martin, Marshawn Lynch is coming back, and of course they got Jordy Nelson. Now what are my thoughts about the Raiders as far as fantasy goes? Derek Carr should be pretty good. Uh, Mari Cooper, same story as always, tons of upside. I, I think he'll be good though, I think he'll be really good this year. But it's going to be a team that doesn't care about your fantasy team. You know, sort of like the Patriots backfield. They, they don't care too much about your personal fantasy team. Actually, they hate your fantasy team. Jordy Nelson, if he has any gas in the tank, he has zero to two years left of gas in the tank. I think he'll be good, but he'll also be very inconsistent. This is going to be the type of offense where they run the ball a lot. They will use the running back position quite a bit. Then they'll go play action. They'll throw to Jordy. They'll throw to uh, Amari Cooper. It's hard to really point to where you're going to find value. Other than Derek Carr and Amari Cooper, everything else is a huge question mark. Okay, let's run through these other moves NFL teams made really quick. The Browns, all I have to say is, wow. Uh, I don't really have a good idea of what's happening. Uh, I can't give you a great fantasy breakdown. I mean, obviously, Jarvis Landry's amazing wide receiver. He's going to be good. He's going to be solid. Going to be great in PPR. But other than that, everything else is a question mark. The Browns have a ton of early draft picks, including the first overall pick and the fourth overall pick. I think they'll draft Saquon Barkley, the number one running back in the draft, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens in the NFL draft before we put too much analysis as far as what the Browns are doing. They announced that Tyrod Taylor is hands down the starting quarterback. Uh, even if they draft a quarterback, I think he, the, the rookie quarterback they would draft won't be starting game one, but we don't really know. We can't really trust what they're saying. Just going to have to wait and see, guys, what happens in the NFL draft. LeGarrette Blunt signs a one-year, $4.5 million deal with the Detroit Lions. This definitely boosts Jay Ajayi's value up quite a bit. I believe Jay Ajayi will have much more value in non-PPR leagues compared to PPR leagues. But you got Corias Clementine over there, who's an excellent pass catcher and even does some work in the red zone but Ajay man once he moved from Miami to Philadelphia he's been really good really efficient getting a ton of yards and a ton of touchdowns without th touching the ball that many times now he's going to touch the ball a lot more running back Jarek McKinnon signs a four-year 30 million dollar deal with the 49ers this one was a bit of a surprise to me not that they got Jarek McKinnon just that they paid him so much like whose job is it on the Niners uh, isn't your job to lowball the guy and then the agent says like give me more money then they come to an agreement or did the Niners just go like yeah, we'll, we'll give you whatever you want. I, I just don't get why they spent this much money on Jarek McKinnon. I like Jarek McKinnon. He is a great fit. Uh, but I, I, I mean, he's just not a three down back. Like, I, I don't get this. You're paying him a lot of money. I just thought that the Niners could have maybe lowballed him a little bit more. Maybe do like a four year for 21 to $24 million in that range. Save about $2 million per year. I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert in contracts, but seems like he got paid a lot of money. In PPR leagues, he will be very nice though. Offensive guard Andrew Norwell signs a five-year $66 million contract with the Jags, making him, I believe, the highest paid offensive guard. This further improves the Jaguars run game. If Fournette can stay healthy, wow, he's gonna be a good running back. Jags run game gets a boost because of this. Running back Deion Lewis signs a four-year $20 million contract with the Titans. I have Derrick Henry in my keeper league and i don't like that i think alex smith takes a step down from last year where he had a great year finished as a top five quarterback in fantasy now i don't see him having many weapons especially if jordan reed gets hurt again which he does every year john brown goes to the baltimore ravens i like john brown as a late round flyer i liked him last year i was completely wrong he got injured but if you're able to get him like in round 11 to 16 in that range i think he's gonna be really good he probably be inconsistent but get some good chunk yard plays he's a good deep threat hopefully he can stay healthy and maybe we'll have some more information but i probably wouldn't take this guy round 10 or earlier that's way too early i made that mistake last year and i'm not gonna make it this year let's talk about defenses 
The Texans D gets a significant boost by signing the Honey Badger to a one-year $7 million contract. One of my favorite defensive players when he was healthy, when he was just playing lights out. This is a very valuable type of player because he can play safety, he can cover the slot receiver, he can do it all, and he can make plays for that defense. Now, I think he would have made a little bit more if he stayed with the Cardinals. They asked him for a pay cut, but he's like, you know, forget about you guys. I'm going with the Texans. I like the Texans team as a whole. They, their stock goes up. And why I really like the Texans D in fantasy is because we're, don't, we're not necessarily looking for a consistent, solid, real-life defense. Uh, like the Vikings, I believe, were one of the best defenses last year. Very uh, consistent, very solid. They won a lot of games. I mean, heck, they almost made it to the Super Bowl. But they weren't as opportunistic. And quarterback pressure is what we look at. The Texans can do that if J.J. Watt's healthy. Uh, Jadavion Clowney. I mean, shoot, they have a lot of pass rushers. Uh, I'm looking for quarterback pressures. I'm looking for opportunistic defenses who are able to force turnovers. That's what we want when it comes to fantasy. And I think the Texans D is going to do that. Even if they're a little bit soft against the run, a little bit soft in the middle of that defense. I'm looking for turnovers, man. That's what gets you points when it comes to fantasy. Rams defense definitely gets a boost. The only problem is, I mean, they have amazing corners. I think the only problem is, is that other people know this as well. Like, it's not going to be a big sleeper, not by any means. They got Aaron Donald. Now they got the three corners. Uh, you know, they got Tlaib, Marcus Peters, and they re-signed their slot corner. It's just a great D. And... Yeah, man, other people are going to know this too. I think they're going to be one of the first defenses off the board when, when it comes to fantasy drafts. But the Texans D, who I just mentioned, now they will be slept on a little bit because of recency bias. Last year, they were horrible. I think the Texans finished 26th overall defense in fantasy. The Rams were, were good. They finished, you know, decent. Uh, they, they did well. I think Aaron Donald needed a couple games uh, to get back acclimated. You know, he, he was holding out. Now his contract's situated. They made a lot of moves. Rams D should be solid. But Texans D probably will be undervalued. The Eagles D, I expect them to be about the same as last year. They're really good. I like them, but there's no secret here. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows they were good. They made some great signings like Michael Bennett, for instance. So they'll be about the same, which is... An elite defense. Now, the Vikings, they finished, I think, around uh, defense number 11 in fantasy, which is kind of low for how good they really were. Maybe they'll get some more turnovers. Maybe they'll score some more defensive touchdowns and get fantasy owners some more points. A lot of good defenses to pick for a man. Don't draft one too early. Don't make that mistake. And before we go, I think we want to talk a little bit about kickers. What video would this be without talking about kickers? So one battle I'm looking forward to is Caleb Sturgis, who just signed a two-year deal with the Chargers, and Nick Rose. I think they have three kickers on their roster. I think Roberto Aguayo is on their roster. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really care about him, though. But they do have Sturgis and Rose, both good kickers. I think that Sturgis is better. He's very accurate. And if Sturgis wins the job flat out, I think that could be my last round draft pick. Probably won't even get drafted in fantasy leagues. I like Caleb Sturgis as a sleeper kicker. I think I have a good read on what people think of Jimmy Graham, but I want to know your opinion about Patrick Mahomes. And this actually will help me out. Like, do you think Patrick Mahomes will be a good fantasy quarterback? Will he be a risky one? Will he suck? Are you going to avoid him? Let me know. I want to know the public consensus. That way, like, if 8 out of 10 answers, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know. If 8 out of 10 people in the comments say, oh, okay, Patrick Mahomes sucks. I'm not drafting him. Boo-hoo. Blah, blah. Then I know that on my fantasy draft, I'll likely be able to steal him in the mid to late rounds. Probably more like the late rounds, but I want to know what people are thinking of Mahomes right now. Please let me know, and I urge you guys to also read the comments so you can see what other people are thinking of the young Chiefs quarterback. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting this couch icon over here. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't like it. I'll see you on the next video. Free agency frenzy!